Hey investor friends, I'm Michelle Markey and it's the time of the quarter where the latest stock holdings of super investors who have over $100 million of assets under management tends to come out and it's around mid-May 2023, which means the 13F filings just came out for the first quarter of 2023. And so like I've done in the past, I'll tell you my thoughts about what some of my favorite super investors have been invested in or what they've divested out of and also some other investors that sometimes I keep tabs on every now and then. So some of my favorite investors include Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, Monish Pabrai, Guy Spear, and Lee Liu. And then also some other investors I tend to check out include Michael Burry, Bill Ackman, Bill Miller, Greg Alexander, and I'll tell you a little bit about what some of these guys have been invested in. So if you also enjoy studying some of the best investors to maybe get some potential investment ideas, I hope you'll like and subscribe to my video and YouTube channel because I think it's amazing to be on this journey of learning to be the best investors we can be. So I hope you enjoy. Starting with Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio, their equity holdings went down only by one from 49 last quarter to 48, and the portfolio market value seemed to go up from around $300 billion last quarter to around $325 billion in the first quarter. So all in all, they've had a little bit of progress, and in general, they've had slightly more sells than buys in selling or reducing 12 equities and only buying or adding 10 equities. So between some of these, what's a little surprising is how much Berkshire Hathaway is placing a lot of faith in Hewlett Packard, maker of computers and also printers. So maybe there's a lot of ink money to be made there. I'm not sure exactly what the investment case for HP is, but definitely kind of interesting, as well as some other picks that it seems like there was both good and bad in the bank stocks. Like Berkshire kept adding to their Bank of America, Citigroup, and Capital One Financial was a new buy. But meanwhile, they sold or reduced some Ally Financial and also Bank of New York Mellon and U.S. Bank Corp. So definitely a mixed bag with the bank stocks. And then even though Buffett said, you know, people are not so happy about Paramount Global maybe reducing their dividend somewhat, at the same time, Berkshire added to that as well as they added to some of their other holdings that they've liked before, like Apple and Markel and what I think is interesting is how they kept adding to their Occidental Petroleum holding and yet reduced in their Chevron. And those are both oil and gas stocks as far as I'm concerned. And then they reduced in several others that I'm not super familiar with, like Aon or Celanese, McKesson and General Motors and Restoration Hardware. And yet they added or bought new stocks like Diageo, the maker of beverages and something I don't know, Vitesse Energy. And in addition to those, they sold off completely out of their Taiwan Semiconductor holding. So it's fascinating considering how about two quarters ago, Berkshire went heavily with $4 billion into Taiwan Semi, but given the geopolitical concerns, it's sort of interesting how much Buffett may have lost faith in being able to invest in that Taiwan Semiconductor company, and yet seems to be recently favoring some Japanese stocks. So, Although the American 13F equity holding doesn't show the Japanese stocks, I think that there's something brewing there because we've seen Buffett give some interviews lately that he's talking up Japanese stocks. So even though I don't know exactly what he's invested in there, it seems to be on the rise on the country that faces the sun. So kind of interesting to see what might happen with Japanese stocks in the future. And then with Charlie Munger of Daily Journal Corporation, as I talked about in a previous video, Daily Journal did nothing with its existing holdings. Like they neither sold nor bought any of their Alibaba equity holdings and they kept all of their bank stocks. So nothing really changed as far as Charlie's portfolio. And then moving on to Monish Pabrai's portfolio, it looks like he sold entirely out of the BAM, which is the Brookfield Asset Management, one of the sort of legacy slash spinoff companies. But I think the spinoff company that he's really holding on to is the larger Brookfield Corp. So he added to that one while getting rid of BAM. So he kept BN, but ditched BAM. And then he reduced 
Micron Technology, which is actually similar to how Berkshire reduced or sold out entirely out of their semiconductor stock. So it's interesting that it seems Monish is getting less optimistic about semiconductors maybe. And so is actually Li Lu because he also reduced in his Micron stock, but more on Li Lu later. And moving on to Guy Spear, it looks like he neither bought nor sold any American stocks in the first quarter. So not much to say there, but it'll be interesting to see what might shake out in terms of some international holdings, both Monish Pabrai and Guy Spear might be seeking out. And then now back to Li Lu, it's interesting that just like Berkshire Hathaway added to their Bank of America holding, so did Li Lu of Himalaya Capital, as well as Li Lu's company seemed to buy more of this East West Bank Corp. So even though I'm not familiar with bank stocks, but it seems that in the first quarter, Himalaya Capital got bullish on bank stocks. So definitely interesting to keep note of where both Berkshire and Himalaya are getting bullish and bearish on certain bank stocks. And then moving on to Michael Burry of Scion Acid Management. There was once upon a time recently where his portfolio seemed to have only one holding and that was Geo Group. And in this first quarter, he seemed to have reduced significantly in that holding of private prisons. And meanwhile, he added about 20 other holdings lately. And during a lot of the bank run turmoil in March, he seemed to maybe get kind of excited about a bunch of bank stocks. So he added a lot, including similar ones to what Berkshire Hathaway added like Capital One. But meanwhile, it seems that unfortunately, Scion seemed to also invest in First Republic, which kind of went down the tubes and then Chase, JP Morgan bought that bank. So maybe that $2 million bet didn't quite pay off for Scion, but yet Michael Burry seemed to have made other interesting bets, like doubling down on his existing holdings of Alibaba and JD.com, which are his two biggest holdings now in the Scion portfolio. So I find it fascinating that just as other people are bailing out of Chinese stocks or ones that may be affected by geopolitical risks, he seems to be doubling down even more on stocks that used to be darlings a few years ago and now they're kind of shunned so he's definitely a contrarian investor compared to some others and then i don't know all that much about some of these other stocks but he seems to be kind of interested in some communications or media stocks and you may want to look into those if you have circle of competence in some of those fields and then moving on to bill miller Unlike Michael Burry, Bill Miller seemed to be getting a little bit bearish on BABA where even though it's still his top 10th holding, he reduced somewhat, but still has a pretty sizable $54 million or so holding in BABA. And he also reduced in Alphabet or Google, but in spite of Bill Miller reducing in Google, Bill Ackman actually added or bought some Google. So in spite of maybe some people getting a little bearish on Alphabet, some like Bill Ackman got bullish. And maybe part of the reason why Alphabet is up lately is because they've announced that they're working on their own AI related search engine. And maybe that will eventually yield some dividends and some kind of important search tech evolution that's going on with the rise of ChatGPT and so on. So. Maybe that's kind of what Bill Ackman is betting there. And it's interesting to me that he would purchase more of the Goog, which is the Class C non-voting shares, as opposed to Google, which are the Class A voting shares. So definitely interesting that he would favor one more so than the other. And then he seemed to reduce somewhat in some of the post-pandemic favorites like Lowe's and Chipotle and also Hilton Hotels. And he didn't have too much difference in some of his other holdings, except to add a little bit to the Howard Hughes holding, which is a real estate company and Canadian Pacific, Kansas City, a railroad company. So he added to those. And finally, the one that I also wanted to touch on a little bit was Greg Alexander of Conifer Management or Sequoia. And what Greg Alexander is interesting about is he's one of Buffett's favorite investors and him aside from Seth Klarman. So even though I'm not going to talk about Seth Klarman today, I just wanted to also highlight how Greg Alexander is also an investor to try to keep some tabs on. And while I don't know all that much about some of his holdings, he did reduce in Stellantis, which used to be 
Fiat Chrysler and Peugeot, and yet also added to another automotive group that he's owned and reduced in a couple of holdings that I'm not familiar with. So overall, I don't know all that much about these particular holdings, but since he's such a great investor, it might behoove us to study more of maybe why he might invest in some of these companies. Like what could be the investment case both for and against some of these companies just as a learning exercise to help us be better investors. So with that, that's all I got for today. Let me know in the comments what you think about some of these super investors investing activities of late. I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this video or learned something, please like and subscribe. Till next time.